Hello and welcome. My name is Fas Kareem and I want to welcome everyone to a quick course on Microsoft Forms. Now Microsoft Forms is one of those web apps that we have available with Office 365 on office.com. And it allows us to create these great polls, questions, quizzes, surveys. Now in this course, I want to talk about how we can access Microsoft Forms. How do we actually create a form? How do we customize the questions? How do we customize the theme, the template? And then once we build the form, how do we share it? What are the various methods that we have to share the form that we can get some answers and responses, these questionnaires or quizzes we're creating? So a lot of nifty stuff, but I do want to keep in mind and remind everybody that Microsoft Forms is one of those apps that are available for Office 365 users. And it's an online only app, meaning there isn't a desktop app that you can download. You'll see more of that when we actually dive in and get around in forms when we visit office.com. But hopefully we have Office 365. Hopefully we're ready to go ahead and see how we can build these forms because I'm pretty excited about it. It's a pretty powerful tool and it doesn't take too much work to get started and up and running. It's a live form that you can use. Now, before we do begin, I do want to give you all the opportunity to join Offsite by Learn It. Now, Offsite is a great site we've put together where you can come and post questions. And me or another instructor that makes these great videos will come and answer them. Or you can visit our free office hours that we occasionally put up there. And if you're a little bored and YouTube's not cutting it, you can go ahead and browse our posts to see what updates are new and the latest features that have been released with Office 365 and we can talk about it and build a community together. It's growing. I'm there. I post there regularly. I'm hoping to see you all there. Go ahead and check out the description to see if you have a quick little link that you can click to join Offsite. That way you can go ahead and talk to me and the other instructors that make these wonderful videos and see if you can go ahead and get a little bit more in depth with any questions, or maybe you want to pop into the office hours and see if there's anything you want to discover with us. Hope to see you there. Alrighty. So, I'm over here on office.com. I went ahead and signed into my office account. It's okay, you didn't need to see that screen. It's just with your email and your office password. Now, I do want to point out that there has been an update with the office.com website. You're going to notice that your web apps are now listed on the left hand side, but you still have access to the app launcher. So if you do not see Microsoft Forms, you might want to take a look at your app launcher. You might have access to it from there. Now the reason being is it typically shows the tools that you've been using up top. And if you haven't used Forms yet, you might even have to click on all apps and search for Forms to actually find it. But once you do find it, it'll go ahead and take you to the web apps homepage to where you can create your very first form, view your recent forms, or view any forms that people have been sharing with you. I have it open on my other tab over here. So, with Microsoft Forms here, you're going to notice that we have the ability to create a new form or a quiz directly at the top. Very streamlined tool. But once you start building forms, you're going to notice that your recently used forms or recently accessed forms will all be available directly from your recent section. Now, a cool thing that you have the ability to do is you can customize this area by pinning certain forms to this home page or pinning those shared forms to this home page here as well and having access to your shared forms, which is pretty useful. Now, down below at the very bottom of this page, you will also see your groups. Most of your Office products, such as Yammer, Teams, SharePoint, Outlook, they all create groups. Groups hold various resources that those collections of people need for projects, department resources, anything they need to get done with that group that they have. Now, we're going to be focusing on forms here, so I want to build a new form. And maybe towards the end, I'll add it to one of my groups and teams there that we can use it for. Let me go ahead and build a new form here. Now, a really cool thing about creating forms 
is that they're automatically saved. So if you're gonna notice that with most online tools, as soon as you start typing something or you start creating something, it's gonna start saving it for you. And up top, it says the word saved. So I just wanna show everybody that if I go back over to my forms homepage there, let me go to the forms homepage. You're gonna see that I already have a recent form being built, an untitled form that I've created on this tab over here. So it's automatically being saved. I'm gonna go ahead and call this my Microsoft Form Example Survey. Now I do wanna be a little, a little styly. I wanna have some little graphics in there. So I'm gonna insert an image here. And lucky for us, we can do a nice Bing search. We can upload an image from our OneDrive account or directly from our computers. Now, I do have a image of Office 365 in my OneDrive account, but let's see if we can use this Bing search to find maybe a Microsoft Forbes logo. That works. I'll choose this one over here and I'll add that in. I like it. Microsoft Form Example Survey. Add a little description. All right, you're noticing up top, everything I'm doing is saying saving, saving, and then saved. Pretty nice. So if I were to go back to this page over here and just refresh it, my home page of Microsoft Forms, you're seeing that everything is being saved as we go along. So far, there's zero responses. We'll get there. But it's no fun just watching me do things. How about you pause the video? Pop into your office.com, click on the forums web app, and create your very first form. Have fun with it. Once you give it a title, add a little image. I mean, there's a Bing search, it's easy. Once you do that, go ahead and come right back. I don't wanna to go too far off without you having a form in front of you. That's when the learning happens. So, now that we've built a form, we have a title, a nice description, there's a few things that I wanna talk about. Since you're the person making the form, you got a lot of options and a lot of areas you can customize. Now, the first thing that we can see over here is there's two different tabs for this form. We can see the questions and we can see the responses tab in case anyone has filled out a response to the form, but currently there's no questions in the form, so there's not much we can actually view on the responses tab. But before we actually send out this form and build the questions, it's nice to go ahead and take a look at the themes that you have available to customize the look and the feel of the form. Now when creating a form, the default theme is gonna be the teal theme, the forms kind of color there, but you have quite a few various other themes that you can browse through, color schemes, or even making your own. Custom theme with maybe an image that you wanna upload, or a custom color code that you wanna add in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick a theme just to make it look a little different and stand out there. I'm gonna close out the theme window. And I'm always curious to see how this is gonna look for the user that's filling out the form. So you also have the option to view a preview. Now this preview is actually gonna show us how the form currently looks and how a user is gonna view the form. So this is our form here with our theme in the back. Now forms can be accessed on a mobile device or a computer. So when you're doing this preview, it's nice to browse the mobile preview as well as a computer preview as you're viewing these themes and you're designing the form there. So before we add any more content and we start adding in our own questions there, try playing around with your themes. I know I didn't, but try adding in your own custom image, your own custom colors, or just using some of the default themes that you have available here. Now, once you're happy and satisfied with that theme there, go ahead and come right back. And we'll continue on by adding in some questions and seeing how we can build out a form that we'll eventually share out so that we can collect some responses. So let's start building our form. 
Now, a really cool thing that they've added into our question options is the ability to make sections. So that way we can bundle up questions into sections and give them a title and a little description about the questions they're about to answer. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that little arrow there, and I'm gonna go over to the section option that we now have available. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and call this section my Office 365 assessment. A poll to see who uses Office 365. A cool thing is you can use the Windows key in a period, and it actually lets you add emojis. I like that. You have to have Windows 10 to do that. Now these sections can also have images too. Let me go ahead and just add some media there. We can use Bing, it's really quick. And I'll go ahead and add in Office 365 logo. We'll add that one in there. Great, looking good, looking good. Now at any point in time, you can go ahead and view the preview option to see how things are looking with your survey there. So far we have our very first section. Let me go back over to the back there. And now that I have my very first section built out with the title, an image, a little description, let me go ahead and add my first question. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a question over here, and I'm gonna choose a choice. And I'm just gonna ask for my first question, what Office 365 web apps do you use? Well, one option can be Microsoft Forms. Maybe another option would be Yammer. I'm gonna add another option here. Maybe someone uses OneDrive on the web. Maybe someone uses SharePoint a lot. Maybe we're uploading a lot of video content and we're using Microsoft Stream to share all those video content. We have a lot of tasks to give out. But you see how many questions I'm getting, how many options? Here, I'm just gonna change this to the add other option. So that way we can go ahead and just have a user type in another response. I'm also gonna allow the user to select multiple answers. So that way I can see if there's more than one tool they're using. I'm not gonna make this question required here, but you can if you choose to. Now from here, I do have the ability to make my life easier for my next question by copying the question and changing some of the responses or the question itself. Or I can delete the question and rearrange the ordering of the question if I have more than one. But for right now, go ahead and try building your very first section and adding in your very first question as well. Now I used a multiple choice question with multiple answers there. And I also added in an option for other. Now, once you are done and you've made your very first question, it is nice to take a look at the preview and just to see how that form will actually look for a user filling it out as you're going along. Go ahead and pause the video. Try building in your very first section, giving it that nice logo, that look, that description, and adding in your very first multiple choice question there for us in that section. And come right back. Now, let's do a little bit more of a complex question option. We talked about sections. We have a section in, but let me add in a Likert question. So I can gauge attitudes and opinions about a topic since we're talking about all these various office apps. Now, I just wanna know how often do you use these apps? For my first option, never, rarely, Maybe my next option would probably be monthly. And I'll also do a weekly option and maybe daily. So how often would maybe someone use Microsoft Forms? How often does someone use OneDrive? I hope every day. 
maybe SharePoint. And I have one more Yammer that I needed to add in. Yammer. Alrighty, now for the final question of this section that I want to add here, I'm gonna add in a new one. I wanna do a rating question. A rating question. How happy are you with the tools Office 365 provides you for work and productivity? I'm going to leave it as a star, one through five, but you can also do a number system. But then I'd probably describe in the question, you know, five being the greatest, one being the least. I'll do stars. So go ahead and pause this video. Try building your own questionnaire with the Likert and maybe using a rating as well. View those other options too before we dive in and add another section for a few more questions that we have. Pause the video, add in those two questions, add in just two questions of your liking and come right back. Alrighty, now that we have a assessment, section. I'm going to add in another section that we have. I'm going to add in a section for this form here. I'm going to go to the bottom here and add in a section there. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it the Microsoft Teams assessment. How many of us use Teams for collaboration? And I'm going to go ahead and add in, yeah, let's add in an image. Why not? Very easy, right? You just use Bing. And I'll find a Microsoft Teams logo. We'll use this one because it's small. Alrighty, I'm just going to add in a question here. And it's just going to be the first question is, do you use Microsoft Teams? And I'm just going to add a yes option and a no option, but this time I want to make it a drop down list so I don't take up too much space here. A drop down list. And since there's only one response, a drop down list seems reasonable for this. Now, I also want to do something called branching. Depending on if the user selects yes or if a user selects no, you can take them to a certain section or a certain question of your survey. So I'm going to go ahead and add another question here. And I'm going to add a rating question. How would you rate Microsoft Teams? And I'll just leave it a one through five. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this first question and I'm going to go to the ellipses of it and I'm going to add branching so that when someone selects the option for yes here, I want them to go to the next question. How would you rate Microsoft Teams? If they select no, I want you to just end the form. So. Now that I've entered in my branching here, I'm going to go to back at the top there because I've added in the branching to this form here. So depending on what answer they select, the yes or the no, it will determine if they'll answer that fifth question. Try that out for yourself. Add in section two so that you can add in a question and then tie that question to the next question using branching. So hopefully we had fun adding in those five questions. Hopefully we didn't have too many difficulties editing the choice to be a drop down list and branching the options to the end of the survey. Now it's nice to see how this all will look on a computer screen by taking a look at the preview. And now that I've actually filled out and created a form, let me actually submit a response. I can go ahead and I actually use each one of these ones here. 
uh, I want to say monthly. This I pop into this daily OneDrive SharePoint daily streams. I'd say monthly. Yammer, I'd say weekly. I'm pretty happy with the tools Microsoft provides. I love Microsoft. And now I'm going to go off to the next section of my form, section two. Now remember, this is the part that we added in branching. So in section two of my survey here, it's asking me, do you use Microsoft Teams? And now I have this drop down option that I've changed it to. And I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And because I chose yes, it's going to take me down to that last question where I can choose five stars. I'm a pretty big fan of Microsoft Teams. And I'm going to submit that response there. Thanks. Let me hit back there. And now that I've submitted my first response, it was me, myself, I'm going to take a look at the responses page. As you can see, I have the option to go ahead and view the results in an Excel spreadsheet. I can see how many people have responded to this. I can choose to print out a summary page, or I can clear off the responses. It actually tracks everything pretty detailed. I have more details if I want to take a look at it and see who did the response there. I want to close out that table. So try going over to the preview and filling out your very first submission of your form and taking a look at the responses page. Now, once you've browsed through the responses here, go ahead and download that Excel sheet. Let me go ahead and show you that too. And as you can see, it's kept track of every single question in a column there. What tools, the Likert, the rating, and the yes or no, all there for you. Try this out. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my response here. I'm gonna delete all responses there. Delete. So I can go back to clean responses. And we come back, we'll talk about how we can share this form, whether we want colleagues to help us build the form or having them answer the form so we can see their responses. So you got a little taste of building your very first form. Now that we have a form being built and we saw how the responses kind of show up and it's pretty cool that we can download it to an Excel spreadsheet, let's talk about how we can share this form. Now the share button's right up top, but there are quite a few options of how you can send and collect responses. Now keep in mind that you can make the form work for anyone or people inside your organization, or you can select specific people to send the form to, and it'll only work for those specific people. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it that where anyone can respond, and then from there I can copy this link and share it out. If I was presenting, I can also build a QR code and I can download this and people can hold their cameras out to fill out the form. If I wanted to add this to a web page, maybe a signature of some sort, I can go ahead and get a nice little code widget for it. Or you can do the most traditional way of sending an Outlook email. Here's a link to this form, and you can send it over to the users that would like to fill out the form. Now, when we select this option here, what we're basically saying is we want the user to respond. But there are options to share a form as a template. Maybe a user wants to use this as a starting base for their forms. Or maybe you want them to actually work and edit and create questions with you on this form, do co-authoring. So besides being able to just share the form and create a link to share it, you can also create a link to share it as a template to reuse this form at a later date. Or to share it to work with others. That way they can help you build the form and add their questions they might find fitting for the form.
Once you have successfully completed the form and you've browsed through these options, try building yourself a QR code and downloading it. It does show up as a PNG to where people can actually use this image to link themselves to that form if they hold their camera. Go ahead and play around with the share options. Once we come back, I do want to dive into Microsoft Teams and talk about how we can add these forms to our groups so that people in those teams can answer those responses and uh, we can view them all within the team there as well. Pretty nifty. I went ahead and opened up one of my Microsoft Teams that I have available, which is a group. And if you go and you know about channels, we have the ability to add a tab to these channels. One of the tabs that you have the ability to add is a forms tab. Now you can actually use your pre-existing forms and you can go ahead and add an existing form. There's my personal form that I've created. That way you can collect responses from the Teams channel or you can show the results to other members of the team without sharing that Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna go ahead and do a show results option. It'll let you know that a web address will be created. Anyone can view the summary of the responses. When you hit save, it'll add it to the top of the channel inside of the team that you've added it to. More specifically, that specific channel. Now it's pretty nifty. I notice a lot of people do this, but they forget to change the setting from collect responses to show results. So remember, if you want to collect responses from audience members using the form, you're going to use the default option, collect responses. If you want to show the responses from the form without having to email it and deal with that, you can build a tab to show the results for everybody. They'll use that web address to see the summary of the responses. Alrighty. Congratulations, everybody. I do want to thank you all for making it to the end of this course. But that does cover the topics and my learning objectives that I had. Giving you a little taste of what Microsoft Forms is, maneuvering around that home page, accessing your recent forms, and creating a form that you can eventually share. And that way you can view and collect responses, whether it's from Forms itself or Microsoft Teams like we saw. Now I'm curious to know what's going to be your preferred way of sharing a form. Let me know inside the comments of the video. But I don't want you all to forget that we do have a pretty nice area that you can communicate with us instructors on Offsite. Now the link to join Offsite will be in the description of the video where you can access our free office hours, post any questions that you want answered, and a nice spot to keep up to date with the latest Office 365 updates. Be sure to check out Offsite, and I do want to thank you all for partaking in this course, but that's all I have for you. Stay tuned for more, and thank you all for showing up and taking some time to learn these new skills, adopting and adjusting to the modern workplace. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learn It.